for you? Yeah, that works for me, yeah. Great. Okay, I see Raquel's starting things, so we'll get going here in just one minute. Hi, and welcome everyone. I'm Kim Hansen, an Executive Director at Diabetes Canada, and I'm really pleased to be here today to speak with you about how those of you who are affected by diabetes, maybe either living with diabetes or with prediabetes, or who have family members or are caring for those who do, can live well with diabetes and reduce its risks. I'm so pleased today to be joined by endocrinologist and expert speaker, Dr. Calvin Key. Dr. Key, thank you so much for being with us today. Welcome. Thank you. I'm really happy to be able to take part today. We'll be offering today's webinar in both English and Cantonese. We'll be um, answering some key questions around what diabetes is, factors including ethnicity that can put some people at higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes, common signs and symptoms, and how you can live well with diabetes. We'll be recording today's remarks so you can revisit them if you'd like on our YouTube channel. And we'll be taking questions from our viewers. So if you've got any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to send them to us. If you're joining us by Zoom, you can use the Q&A function. And if you're joining us on Facebook, please just include your questions in the comments and we'll get to them during the hour. So let's start by testing the knowledge of our viewers. Or sorry, actually, we're gonna first ask Dr. Key. Um, diabetes is a serious disease and it affects many, many Canadians. Talk to us about that. How many Canadians are we talking about here? Yeah, so diabetes is a very serious disease. Um, about 11 million Canadians currently either have diabetes or pre-diabetes. So this represents more than one in four Canadians. Of the 11 million, over 4.2 million are living with diabetes and over 6 million are at risk of developing diabetes. So every three minutes, one Canadian is diagnosed with diabetes. By 2025, 13.6 million Canadians will either have diabetes or pre-diabetes if we don't take steps to prevent and slow its onset. So from these numbers, we can see why it's really important to learn about diabetes so that we can prevent its onset and its serious complications. So in terms of diabetes prevalence, in Canada, about 9.5% of the total population has been diagnosed with either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. The overall estimated pre prevalence of diabetes in Canada, including those cases that are undiagnosed, is suspected to be around 28.5% of the population. So the prevalence of diabetes varies by region as well, with New Brunswick having the highest rate of prevalence at 12.5%, and Nunavut with the lowest at 3.9%. So I'm just going to go through that again uh, for our uh, Cantonese listeners to the webinar today. Okay. Chin 還有糖尿病、白癡期糖尿病。
高風險嘅人士佔總人口嘅二十八點五個 percent， 而發病率嘅高低因地區而言，例如在新不倫瑞克省，患病率為最高，係十二點五個 percent， 而喺流立慕特州嘅患病率為最低，係三點五個 percent。Great. Thanks for that, Dr. Key. That's some uh, sobering but really helpful information. So uh, before we go much further, let's just do a quick sort of bust some myths about diabetes. So uh, some of these, one of these statements is true, rather. Is it true that eating too much sugar causes diabetes? Is it true that insulin is a cure for diabetes? Is it true that diabetes is a serious disease like cancer or heart disease? Or is it true that there are two types of diabetes? And I'll invite you guys to play along uh, on your own and you can score yourselves for kind of bragging rights with your friends and family, but we'll take the answers up quickly in the interests of time. So the answers are, the, the true one here is that diabetes is a serious disease like cancer or heart disease. And Dr. Key is gonna talk to us today about some of the complications of diabetes and a bit more about why it's so serious. It's not true that eating sugar causes diabetes. While we know that a healthy diet is an important part of preventing or delaying type two where that's possible and helping all of us live healthily, eating sugar doesn't make you get diabetes. Insulin is also not a cure for diabetes. While it's a really valuable life-saving treatment for people with many forms of diabetes, it's not a, a cure, we still have it. And finally, there are more than two types of diabetes and I believe Dr. Key is gonna tell us all about that in just a few minutes. So let's dive in. Dr. Key, can you explain to us what kinds of changes happen in our body when we develop diabetes? Yeah, so what is diabetes? That's often something that people are wondering. So our body gets energy by converting carbohydrates into glucose or sugar. We get carbohydrates from eating foods like breads, pasta, potatoes, milk, fruits, and vegetables. And to use this glucose or energy, the body needs insulin. Insulin is like a key that lets glucose in from the bloodstream to enter the parts of the body that need it for energy. Insulin is a hormone that's made by your pancreas. And in someone with diabetes, the process of producing、um, or using insulin is impaired. So, what is it? 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 轉轉化為葡萄糖或糖分嚟獲取能量。為了利用呢啲葡萄糖獲取能量，人體需要胰島素。胰島素咧就係、是、一一把鎖匙，可以讓血液中嘅葡萄糖進入需要能量嘅身體各部位。胰島素係由胰腺。創生嘅激素喺糖尿病患者中，創生胰島素、創生胰島素或者係使用胰島素嘅過程中受到損害，而不能產生足夠胰島素，就係、是、患有糖尿病。What happens, and, and what's the difference? So, in a person who has diabetes,、um, either their body makes no insulin, and that would be type one diabetes, or their body makes too little insulin, or doesn't properly use the insulin it makes, and that would be classified as type two diabetes. If there isn't enough insulin, or the insulin is not working well, blood glucose levels, also known as blood sugar levels. Become too high because instead of going to where it's needed for energy, the glucose sits in the bloodstream. High glucose levels make a person feel tired, thirsty,、uh, or need to urinate a lot. So a person might also lose a lot of weight very quickly, have trouble seeing well, or have infections more often. Over time, high blood glucose levels can cause damage to the blood vessels and lead to serious and deadly complications. 
患有糖尿病人嘅身體狀況會點樣呢？第一，一型糖尿病，佢哋嘅身體不能創生胰島素。第二咧，就係、是、二型糖尿病，佢哋嘅身體創生太少或者沒有正確使用期創生嘅胰島素。如果冇沒有足夠胰島素咧，或者胰島素不能很好地起作,起作用。葡萄糖會停留喺血液中，而不能到達需要能量嘅地方。血液糖水水平，血液葡萄糖水平，也稱為血糖水平，便會並會變到變得過高。如果一個人嘅血糖水平太高，會令到佢感感到疲倦、口渴和。口渴或者需要多小便，隨即也會令到他短時要短時來失去好多體重，也會損害佢嘅視力，咪容易受到感染。長期血糖過高，也會損害血管，並導致嚴重或致命嘅病發症。Great. So, Dr. Key, you've mentioned a couple of the types of diabetes, but could you just tell us a bit more about them and what the differences are among them? Sure. So let's start with type 1 diabetes. The type 1 diabetes is caused when the body can no longer make its own insulin. About 10% of people with diabetes have type 1. It's diagnosed most often in children and young adults. And people with type 1 must inject insulin every day. This can be done in several ways, either through needles, insulin pens, or with an insulin pump. Type 1 diabetes cannot be prevented, and currently there is no cure. However, it can be managed with healthy eating, exercise, blood glucose testing, and daily insulin injections. Now we're going to talk about one disease. One disease is because the body is able to make insulin injections. 而引起嘅，大約全體糖尿病人嘅十個 percent， 最常在兒童或年青人上確診。依類病症需要每日注射胰島素，注射胰島素有以下三種方法：第一就係用注射針，第二就係用胰島素筆，第三就係用胰島素泵。一型糖尿病係無法預防，亦都無法治愈，但係可以通過健康飲食、運動、血糖測試同埋每日注射胰島素嚟控制病情。So we'll move on to pre-diabetes. So pre-diabetes is when your blood glucose levels are higher than normal. But below the level to be diagnosed with diabetes. So, if you fall into that category, you might be told that you have pre diabetes. Although there is no cure for diabetes, and the longer you have diabetes, the higher the risk of complications, pre diabetes offers a warning. It gives you a chance to take action to prevent type 2 diabetes and to stay more healthy. If you have pre diabetes, type 2 diabetes can be prevented or delayed. Through lifestyle choices such as eating healthy and exercising regularly. Pre diabetes can be diagnosed by your healthcare professional with a routine blood test. Teen K Tong Liu Bang. You go like a hut tong soy ping, go you sing song, but I die you chan dun wei tong liu bang soy ping. They will be go zi wan song teen K Tong Liu Bang. 患前患糖尿病嘅時間越長，發生病發症嘅風險越高。儘管無法完全治愈糖尿病，但係喺患糖尿病前期嘅警告中，你可以採取行動去預防或者延遲二型糖尿病嘅病發。我哋嘅醫療部見人員。可以通過常規血糖檢查
診斷出糖尿病前期。So let's move on to type 2 diabetes. So this is the most common form of diabetes. About 90% of people with diabetes have type 2. Uh, in type 2 diabetes, this is most commonly seen in adults, but there has been an increasing uh, trend in young people developing type 2 as well, uh, especially amongst the uh, indigenous population and also amongst uh, South Asian populations as well in Canada. So if you recall, type 2 diabetes is caused when the body cannot make enough insulin or it can't properly use the insulin that it does make. While there's currently no cure for type 2 diabetes, it may be prevented or delayed with healthy eating, exercise, and checking your blood sugar, as well as taking your medications. Yokesi 但是可以通过药物,健康饮食,运动,及检查糖,血糖,来预防或者延迟病症。So we're going to move on to talk about gestational diabetes now. It's recommended that all pregnant women be tested for gestational diabetes. It affects about 3.7% of all pregnancies. Risks associated with gestational diabetes include having a very large baby, which can be dangerous for both mom and baby during the delivery, higher rates of cesarean delivery, so when the baby is delivered via an incision made through the mother's abdomen and uterus, also known as a C-section, and dangerously low blood sugar levels for the baby. However, it can be managed by making healthy food choices and sometimes with insulin. After pregnancy, a mother's blood sugar level almost often returns back to normal. Although a mother's blood sugar levels often return to normal after pregnancy, they are at a greater risk of developing type 2 diabetes later on in life. Yin 我们可以通过选择健康饮食或者有时要使用胰岛素来进行管理通常分娩后母亲的血糖水平会回复正常但是它在以后患上胰岛素的风险较大 That's a lot of fantastic information, Dr. Key. Thank you so much. So, Tell us a little bit more about what some of the risk factors are for type 2 diabetes. Yeah, sure. So the risk factors for developing type 2 diabetes include age. So if you're over 40 years of age, your risk is higher. Second is family history. If you have a first degree blood relative with type 2 diabetes, for example, a parent, a brother, or a sister, your risk will be higher. Ethnic background. If you're indigenous, uh, if you're Asian, especially South Asian, or if you're Hispanic or African, your risk will be higher. 
if you have had gestational diabetes or if you've given birth to a baby that weighed over nine pounds or four kilograms, or if you've had polycystic ovarian syndrome, your risk will be higher. Lack of exercise. So there's a strong link to type two diabetes for people who don't exercise, as well as being overweight. Another strong risk factor for type two diabetes, especially where weight is mostly around the stomach or apple shaped. You can lower your risk by being fit and by making healthy food choices. The last risk factor is having high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Gum yade gong ha, yong yi wan sung yi ying tong yi bang, ye yan so. A yet so hai lin ling. Yu goli tu go se sub soi, tuk fong him wi gao go. Da yi so hai garting lik si, yu goli ga gun sun, sa hai lay fu mo, or the hing tai si mui, wan yo yi ying tong yi bang. 即是患上糖尿病的風險會較高。超過九磅的嬰兒或者你患有多囊卵巢總合症第五就是缺乏運動二型糖尿病多數不做運動第六就是超重超重是二型糖尿病患者的一個強大一個強大風險因素尤其是蘋果新型的人士第七就是高血壓或者高膽固醇的人士 Great, thank you for that Dr. Key. Now before we go to the next slide, one of our viewers has a great question. Uh, our viewer recently had a high sugar content in a urine sample. Does that mean that they have diabetes? They're going for blood work on the 14th of August to find out, but I imagine are curious in the meantime. So um, currently we don't uh, diagnose uh, diabetes by looking at the urine, although the name uh, diabetes mellitus actually does refer to sweet urine. It's a, a finding that uh, you know people have noticed for hundreds of years. So uh, while that uh, certainly could mean that they, they might have diabetes, um, the standard way of diagnosing diabetes uh, would be through blood tests. So you could speak to your doctor about getting the proper blood test to get the diagnosis of diabetes. Good advice, thank you. So let, let's move on then. What are some of the signs and symptoms that you, uh, a person might have diabetes that we should be watching for? Sure. So some of the signs and symptoms, the most common signs that we should be aware of are uh, the need to urinate often, uh, being unusually thirsty, a change in weight, being very tired, uh, blurry vision. Uh, with type 1 diabetes, the symptoms tend to progress very quickly and can be quite dramatic. Um, although with type 2 diabetes, the symptoms usually progress more slowly and may actually go unnoticed. So many people who don't know they have type 2 diabetes may not notice the symptoms at all. In fact, only one out of every three people that have diabetes, uh, in fact, one out of every three people that have diabetes actually don't know that they have it. So that's why regular testing for diabetes is important, especially if you have the risk factors that we talked about. And also please remember that risk assessments and testing for diabetes are actually two different things. Testing for diabetes um, involves a simple blood test that does, uh, that doesn't cost much. Um, you should get tested every three years from age 40 onwards. If you have other risk factors, then you should get tested before the age of 40 uh, or every year. So talk to your doctor about getting tested for diabetes. Yet 
可能發可能非常嚴重。對於二型糖尿病，症狀通常進展進展較慢，並且可能無引起你嘅注意。事實上，有三分之二嘅患上二型糖尿病人不知道自己患上糖尿病，也不察覺自己嘅病症，所以要定期進行糖尿病檢查係好重要嘅，特別係有高危因素嘅人，請注意。風險評估同埋測試係唔同嘅。糖尿病檢查係一種簡單嘅血液檢查，費用唔高。喺四十歲以上，我哋應該每三年接受一次測試。如果你有其他高危風險嘅因素，請喺四十歲之前或者每一年進行測試。你可以同你醫生傾下點樣進誒點點樣接受糖尿病測試。So, Dr. Key, what are some of the more common complications of diabetes? Then, what should we be watching for? So, diabetes is a really serious disease, and the physical impacts go well beyond affecting just the pancreas. For example, people with diabetes and high blood pressure have strokes twice as often as those with high blood pressure alone. And they experience higher rates of adult blindness. Heart disease is two to four two to four times more common in people with diabetes, and diabetes is the most common cause of kidney failure and amputation that isn't the result of an accident. However, there is good news. With proper diabetes management, these problems can be prevented or at least delayed. 糖尿病咧係一種嚴重嘅疾病。除咗影響個胰腺外咧，同時患有高血壓同埋糖尿病人，中風嘅機會比只有患高血壓嘅病人高兩倍。糖尿病患者患有心臟病嘅機會也有高兩至四倍。佢哋患有成人失明嘅比較率也較高。糖尿病也是腎臟衰竭同埋截肢嘅常見原因。好消息就係糖尿病適當，好消息就係通過適當糖尿病嘅管理，可以延遲或者誒預防以上嘅問題。So good news, Dr. Key, that we can prevent or delay the complications of diabetes that you've just described. What are some of the things that we can do in order to prevent or delay these? Absolutely. So let's start by talking about healthy food choices. Whether a person has diabetes or not, we all eat healthier when we follow Canada's food guide. This guide can help people make healthy food choices and eating habits. The guide is now even available. In Chinese, as well as in Hindi and Gujarati and other languages, it's very important to make it a habit to eat a variety of healthy foods each day. Have a plate that is diverse in its food types and which draws from each of the food groups: fruits, vegetables, protein foods, and whole grain foods. When making food choices, choose protein foods that come from plants more often. Choose foods with healthy fats. Instead of saturated fat, healthy fats include olive, canola, soybean, and sunflower oil. Saturated fats include processed meats like sausages and deli meats. Limit highly processed foods. If you choose these foods, eat them less often and in smaller amounts. Prepare meals and snacks using ingredients that have little to no added sodium, sugars. Or saturated fat. Choose healthier menu options when eating out, and make water the drink of choice. Replace sugary drinks with water, and that includes uh, uh, juice.、Uh, use food labels, and be aware that food marketing can influence your choices. 
。咁我哋而家講下健康嘅食物選擇，無論一個人是否有糖尿病。只要遵從加拿大嘅飲食指飲食指南，我哋所有人飲食習慣都會更加更加健康，因為佢作出呢啲健康嘅食物選擇同埋飲食習慣，呢、这個係大幫助嘅指南。現在現現在印有中文版。養成每日吸取正確健康食物嘅係很重要。喺一盤食物中，我哋要每類食物中吸取水果、蔬菜、蛋白質食物同埋穀物食物。選擇來自植物嘅蛋白質食物會更好。選擇健康脂肪而。唔係飽和脂肪嘅食物，例如橄欖油、芥花籽油、豆油同埋葵花籽油等等。飽和脂肪食物包括香腸和加工肉等等，儘量少食加工肉、加工食物。如果唔可以完全誒唔食嘅話咧，就減少次數。或者數量。當我哋預備食物時，要盡量少用辣、糖和飽和脂肪嘅食物。當我哋外出進食時，要應該也也應該要選擇健康嘅餐單，選擇清水作飲品，應該讀清楚食物標籤，了解自己食緊乜。請注意，食物銷售手法會影響你嘅選擇。Fantastic tips, Dr. Key. Thank you. Now let's put our viewers on the hot seat again, and we'll test their knowledge about healthy eating. So,、uh, out of these statements, one of them is true, and see if you can determine which one it is. Is it true that eating healthily means that you can't eat chocolate? Is it true that healthy food choices mean eating foods that have no flavor? Is it true that healthy eating means only eating fresh fruits and vegetables? And what about unsweetened juice has sugar? Which of those is true? So the answer might surprise you. The true answer there is that unsweetened juice has sugar. It is a natural form of sugar, but it is sugar nonetheless, and it. Can act similarly in our bloodstreams to refined sugars, so it's good to consume juice in moderation, if at all. Water should still be our beverage of choice.、Um, eating healthily can include eating chocolate, especially dark chocolate that can have some other health benefits,、uh, as long as we eat it in moderation. Um, eating healthily most certainly does not mean foods that have no flavor. Fruits and vegetables can be very, very delicious. And、uh, healthy eating does not mean only eating fresh fruits and vegetables, because frozen and canned vegetables can be equally nutritious and sometimes a very convenient way of making sure we fill half of our plates with fruits and vegetables at every meal. Great. So let's turn it back over to our expert, Dr. Key. What else can we do? Or sorry, it's not just about what we eat, is it? It's really also about how we eat. Would you say? Yeah, so it's really important to know that healthy eating is more than the foods that you eat. It's about where, when, why, and how you eat. So be mindful of your eating habits. Take time to eat. Notice when you're hungry and when you're full. Cook more often. Plan what you eat. Involve others in planning and preparing meals. And I think certainly everyone's doing more more cooking nowadays. Enjoy your food. Culture and food traditions can be part of healthy eating. Eat meals with others. For more information on these and other recommendations, Canada's Food Guide is accessible online. Whether you have diabetes or not, when we all eat healthier,、uh, we we can do that by following Canada's Food Guide. Eating well with Canada's Food Guide can help you to make healthy choices. It lists the number of servings that you need to get all the nutrients your body needs to be healthy. 
and you can easily access access this information online through their website. 除了時間食,為什麼要吃? 享受食物時要注意我們的飲食文化和飲食習慣這會影響我們的健康飲食當你和其他人飲食時可以上網參考加拿大的食物指南他們會給我們一個健康的選擇無論你是否有糖尿病 so, great tips on how we can eat healthily, but I'm guessing that exercise is also an important part of protecting ourselves against the risk of developing type 2 diabetes or the complications of diabetes. How can we incorporate physical activity into our daily lives, Dr. Key? So almost everyone, whether or not they have diabetes, will benefit from regular exercise. If you're just starting to get active, talk with your healthcare professional about how to get started. It's best to avoid prolonged sitting. Try to interrupt sitting time by getting up briefly every 20 to 30 minutes. The goal is to add 150 to 300 minutes of exercise every week. That sounds like a lot, but it's only about 20 minutes a day. You can add in some weightlifting exercises a couple times a week. An easy way to try lifting soup cans or some heavy books while you watch TV. And start slow and build up. Small changes will make a big difference. Some additional tips include parking the car further from the store, taking the stairs, walking your dog, playing actively with your kids, turning off the TV, computer, or video games, and beginning with walking. Tong 轉轉, 轉轉離你的目的地, 行樓梯, 放九隻, 與孩子一齊換殺, 關閉電視, 電腦, 電視遊戲等等, Fantastic. Thank you, Dr. Key. Now, if I may, I'd like to take a couple of moments to tell our viewers how Diabetes Canada may be able to help them. And I wonder if you'd mind uh, just giving a brief summary of it in Cantonese when I've finished. Uh, so some of the things that Diabetes Canada does to help those of us living with diabetes or at risk of it are that we fund research into ways to prevent, manage, or cure diabetes. 
we advocate with the government and make recommendations to ensure that health and access to care, medications and devices are priorities for all levels of government in Canada. We support healthcare professionals by providing them with up-to-date information, education on research and the latest treatment methods for diabetes so that it helps to ensure that those of us with diabetes get the best care possible from our healthcare providers. And we provide lots of information and educational resources for people with diabetes on our website, on our social media channels, on our YouTube channel. Uh, and this, is, this webinar today is one example of that. You can also access our 1-800 Banting line to ask any questions that you might have about diabetes in general, about financial supports that might be available to you um, through uh, your, your local government, or if you've got specific questions about your own health, we can connect you to a volunteer diabetes educator who can provide you with more customized advice. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, uh 關於糖尿病的,我們可以打給我們的糖尿病加拿大糖尿病協會的熱線1800BANTING。Uh, uh, Fantastic, Dr. Key, thank you so much. Uh, we're, we're pretty much at the end of our time together today, but I really want to thank you, Dr. Key, for sharing your knowledge and expertise with us. I think you've given us a lot of really helpful tips for how we can protect ourselves against either developing diabetes or its complications, so thank you. I really want to thank our viewers and um, encourage them to reach out to Diabetes Canada at any of the ways that you can see on your screen. Just a reminder that this recording will be made available on Diabetes Canada's YouTube channel if you want to go back and refer to any of the pieces of information we've shared. Before we wrap up, I'll just uh, offer you, Dr. Key, any closing remarks? So thank you so much for organizing this, and I think it's a great initiative from Diabetes Canada. I'd like to also thank uh, Jennifer Yu for help preparing some of the Chinese content and uh, to uh, encourage everyone to become uh, more healthy and active and to, to be more aware about what diabetes is and what it means for all of us. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Key, and I wish you and everyone else a good long weekend, and please be well. <laughs>